Hello, everyone. I'm George Pom from Bilin Tech, and I'm happy to be here at GTC 2022 to share a little bit about how to build conversational AI with NVIDIA's developer toolkit on powerful GPU servers and some considerations about making a production AI system. My colleague Brett Huang is also happy to be here to answer the questions in the chat room. Mining Tech was established in 2020, spun off from the Industrial Technology Research Institute, Taiwan. Our mission is to provide an ML ops platform for the AI ecosystem, saving time and resources to help the AI development teams focus on their domain knowledge. This talk will cover three parts. It starts by introducing conversational AI and NVIDIA's development toolkits. Next, we will demonstrate three sample applications and one training example. Last, we talk about developing a reliable AI system for operation. Artificial intelligence has been ubiquitous today and now become humans' good helpers. Using conversational AI, some tasks that used to be required typing and repeated searches are now achievable with simple voice commands. We could get a weather forecast, listen to our favorite music, order a flight ticket, or be directed a path to a restaurant to meet with our friends. Conversational AI could also be used to benefit public safety. For example, South Korean police used AI to learn the language of a Ponzi schemes, such as the statements related to recruitment and the guaranteed incomes. They broke down a group behind the massive Ponzi scheme. Recalling the time when I worked in the cloud system test team a few years ago, our testers often need to stay late at office to co-work with engineers, waiting for their next test request and reporting the test results again and again to find potential bugs or fine-tune the system. My team leader designed a simple Slack bot with a Python that supported some fixed format commands which somehow reduced our workload and boosted the work efficiency. But at that time, conversational AI has not yet been available. And I believe if we use it, the engineers would be more willing to use the SIT bot and less likely to turn to human testers. Conversational AI is built up from neural networks. Modern neural networks for natural language processing are mainly derived from transformers which were introduced five years ago, and the model complexity has drastically grown from 11 million parameters to over 17 billion parameters with a training data size as much as 45 terabytes. It is not hard to imagine that lots of GPUs need to be used to reduce the training time. The neural networks are then be combined to fulfill the tasks such as speech recognition, text classification, translation, and speech synthesis. To build up a prototype for conversational AI, one could use NVIDIA NEMO, a PyTorch-based open source framework for AI developers. NEMO has a rich selection of state-of-the-art pre-chained models for speech recognition, natural language processing, and test-to-speech. You could view the model collection in the NVIDIA NGC catalog and download them to import in your programs. Nemo also has simple and intuitive Python APIs. Transcribing an audio file with a pre-trained model could be done in just eight lines of code. With Nemo, it is possible to customize the model architecture, adjust the processing pipeline, and retrain the model with new data with the Hydra framework 
to enhance the power of a conversational AI to suit your need. After developing the models, it's time to have them go into service with Riva. NVIDIA Riva is designed to help you deploy high-performance speech AI services that could be run on servers at scale or on embedded devices. First, you prepare the pre-trained or customized models. Riva has tools to convert a NEMO or TAU model checkpoint into its representation format. Then, we we'll build for the pipelines for a speech AI task. Riva has currently supported the pipelines for speech recognition, speech synthesis, and language understanding, such as entity recognition, question answering, and much more. Finally, to deploy the pipelines, Riva performs model optimization with NVIDIA Tensor RT, serves multiple neural networks and simultaneously handles multiple requests on the Triton inference server to take full advantage of the target GPUs. It is reported that Riva could provide the real-time service that run in 150 milliseconds, which originally takes 25 seconds on CPU-only platforms. The conversational AI service by Riva could be accessed by standard gRPC clients. Next, we will be talking about application development for conversational AI, starting with three sample applications. The first one is Nemo Translate. It generates a speech audio in translation. Riva Contact is a video conferencing app that transcribes the speech and highlights some special information. Riva Weather listens to weather queries and reports the current weather in major cities around the world. We created a lab with a notebook-based development environment, wrote some Python calls to see the results. During the experiments, the hardware resource consumption could be observed which helps us identify some resource-related problems if the program fails. In this example, we can read a pre-recorded Chinese language recording. The city is in the process of using ASR language. In this example, we read a pre-installed Chinese voice file. Using ASR speech recognition function to extract Chinese content, then translate it into English content, and finally generate the English version of the speech content. In the Notepad development environment, we can easily try community contributed models to create new conversational AI applications. Riva Contact and the Riva Weather are applications made by NVIDIA. We package them into web app templates so that users could launch new applications and have a try within just a few clicks, and the applications will be ready in seconds. We started the new web app by giving its name and the container size. Since the inference is made on the Riva server, no GPUs are needed by the application, and we chose the minimal size for running the web app. For a web app, we could observe its running status, network ports, and console logs to know what's going on behind the scenes. You may also run batch comments directly in the container through the web terminal. Hi, Tom. How's going? Hi, George. Not bad. I heard the weather is up to 40 degrees in Taiwan. Really? Yes. I just can't live without air conditioner. How about you in New York? It's around 30 degrees. So, what's up? Actually, I want to invite you to join an online meeting at 10 o'clock, Taipei time, this Friday. It's 11 o'clock, okay? Sure. See you then. Thanks. Goodbye. 
What's the temperature now? For which location? Taipei. The temperature is 36 degrees in Taipei at the moment. What's the weather in New York today? It is overcast in New York at the moment. The temperature is 26 degrees, the humidity is 65%, and the wind speed is 11 miles per hour. It is also possible to enhance or retrain existing models from new domains. In this example, a bird-based model from the pre-trained checkpoint learns new entities. This is useful when the speech AI needs to recognize new persons, organizations, or locations which are absent from the original data set. We started with two kinds of training data, text, and entity labels. The training process repeated for 10 epochs. We could also open the TensorBoard page from the notebook environment to track the training and validation results. After the training completes, we loaded the Nemo token classification model from the newly generated checkpoint. The prediction results showed that our enhanced model could recognize new entities. When it comes to AI development, many people would think of an interactive notebook environment where you could manipulate data and design AI models with frameworks such as Scikit-Learn, TensorFlow, and PyTorch. Within a few tries, an AI model is ready, and you could use it to do fancy tasks such as image recognition or anything about conversational AI we covered earlier in this talk. Well, this is true, but there is still a big gap between reality. AI systems are much more than model building. To build up a reliable AI system for production use, just like building other production systems, there are much more things to do. Before we go further about AI system building, let's look at the fundamental differences between traditional software systems and AI systems. First, data scientists have important roles in developing an AI system. They are good at data manipulation and model designing but may be unfamiliar with software engineering, so they need to cooperate with software engineers. Second, AI systems are experimental in nature, whose functionality and behavior depend on the data quality, model design, and model training process. More kinds of tests about data and models are needed. It is also important to note that AI models may go stale eventually, because the outside world is constantly changing. Users may complain about your AI systems one day if you never update the models or rechain the models in production. Therefore, to keep a production AI system in good condition, we could follow a set of the best practices called ML ops machine learning operations, extended from DevOps in the software field. Applying MLOps helps us manage the artifacts in the development process better and keep the system updated when a performance downgrade or new data come in. AI system development with MLOps may contain multiple automation pipelines. After the data scientists designed new AI models, they push the model building source code into a version control system, and then package building, model training, and various tests are performed. Verified models and systems will be released in production environments. And we keep monitoring the AI model performance and the whole system to take the corresponding action on alerts. Such a complicated process in fulfilling MLOps requires many tools. Thankfully, many open source tools could be leveraged. 
Here, we show some ML Ops tooling collection made by the Institute for Ethical AI and ML, as well as by the Linux Foundation. You could find more information on their web pages. ML Ops tools may be classified as loads for source and data management, model development, build artifact management, operations, and pipelining. To save time in choosing various kinds of tools and integrating them into the environment and process, MyLintech's ML Thin provides a straightforward integrated ML Ops platform that supports most of the common tasks so that people could focus on the core development work. Notebook environment, model training framework, experiment tracking, data set management, data labeling, AI model management, model pipelining, model serving, application serving, and system monitoring are all available at hand in ML Thin. Gigabyte provides a full GPU server product line, ranging from supercomputing to edge computing, and has NVIDIA GPU technologies built in. Users could find the best suitable server model depending on their application, computing requirements, and budgets. Gigabyte enterprise servers are equipped with NVIDIA A100 GPUs, which support the NVLink and GPU Direct technologies, enabling GPUs to communicate with GPUs, CPUs, and storage through fast channels and shortening the latency in AI training and applications within or across the compute nodes. In addition, A100 supports the multi-instance GPU feature which allows GPUs to be securely partitioned into up to seven GPU instances where multiple users could run their AI workloads separately. MyLintech's ML Thin supports hardware resource management and multi-instance GPU configuration to fully utilize GPUs and server resources. To end this talk, here are some takeaways. First, NVIDIA, Nemo, and Riva enable innovating and the delivery of a conversational AI applications. Second, continuous testing, development, monitoring, and model retraining helps operate a production AI system. Third, integrated ML Ops development platform on top of a powerful GPU servers increases resource utilization and helps experts focus on their domain knowledge. Thank you to NVIDIA and the GTC community and the help from our partner Gigabyte. Thanks for joining us in this session.